everyone. So today we are going to discuss cam follower mechanisms. It is a bit of shift from the previous discussions. Previously we have been discussing uh, kinematic chains and the analytical methods. Uh, but now we're going to uh, shift our focus on uh, a different set of mechanisms. Uh, initially, we're going to discuss cam follower mechanisms. Uh, we're going to spend two weeks on that. Uh, and later on, we're going to uh, spare time for the geared mechanisms. And uh, I'm hopeful that we will finish our discussion uh, for the geared mechanisms in two weeks as well. Uh, so this week, it is going to be the basics, the diction, the vocabulary, uh, and some of the basic terminologies associated with these mechanisms. And obviously, we're going to discuss uh, a few aspects of designing such mechanisms. So this is the topic of today. Let's start the discussion. You know the ritual. We initially ask a few questions. Uh, and by asking and answering these questions, uh, we wish to clarify a few aspects. So we are going to start with a question today. What is a cam follower mechanism? A cam follower mechanism is a mechanism which is going to have two components in it, two parts in it, uh, one which we call cam, the other one which we call follower. And by arranging these two, uh, we are going to allow the simple rotary motion to be transformed into uh, output motion. And the output motion is going to be desired according to whatever uh, the motion profile and the velocities and the accelerations that we wish to have. We wish to uh, design the mechanisms in a fashion that we achieve that. Uh, and it can be translatory as well as oscillatory. Uh, so obviously, uh, from this definition, we can deduce that there are going to be two parts in it. The very first one is a cam, which is the input part. Uh, we are going to perform the rotary action uh, using this component. And let me try to uh, draw it uh, over here in terms of defining the axis of rotation. So uh, this is the center line around which the cam is going to have a rotary action. It can go obviously clockwise and counterclockwise depending upon the, the, the nature of profile. Uh, and uh, since we have a shape associated with this machine component, this shape is going to define the nature of movement uh, on the follower. Uh, follow, as the name suggests, uh, that uh, it has to follow the profile of the cam. Uh, and the way it is being drawn over here, you can see that it obviously is going to allow itself to go upwards and downwards. But this upward and downward, obviously, it is translatory. Uh, it is going to have a specific motion profile uh, because of the shape of the cam over here. So the output is going to be generated by the follower. Uh, and it is going to be according to our wishes and uh, uh, the, the, the desired output is going to be achieved by that. And in order to achieve this desired output, we need to design the CAM profile in a specific fashion. So that is going to be the whole discussion throughout this lecture onwards. So another question is that how generally these CAM follower mechanisms work? There are two ways. One is translatory motion and the other one is the oscillatory motion. Translatory motion as uh, shown over here on the, on the left, you can see that cam rotates and because of the surface profile of the cam and also because the way the follower action has been constrained, uh, it allows only up and down movement, which we call obviously the translatory motion. Uh, on the oscillatory side, which is on the right side, uh, you can see the cam rotating and the follower is having an engagement in a different way as compared to the other uh, example. And because of the nature of this uh, pivoted follower action, you have the oscillatory motion going on. And you can also observe that there is this additional attachment with the follower, which allows you to have some further transformation done on the oscillatory motion. So uh, generally, the camp follower mechanisms may have these two possibilities, and it depends on the nature of the machine that you're designing to decide what kind of action you would, uh, you would design or implement. And now it is important 
uh, to identify what are the pros and cons associated with CAM follower mechanisms. Uh, the advantages are that uh, they have generally fewer number of parts in them and they take much smaller space. Uh, if you compare the CAM follower mechanisms uh, with the linkage mechanisms that we have studied so far, just like four bar mechanism or the slider crank mechanism and stuff like that, uh, you can readily identify that uh, uh, you have much low number of components in the CAM follower mechanisms. Uh, and they take smaller space because the good example of uh, this observation can be uh, like uh, the camshafts in engines. Uh, over there, sometimes one camshaft or sometimes two camshafts uh, operate quite a few number of uh, followers in order to allow the air fuel mixture to be fed into the engine and uh, taken out from it as well in the exhaust stroke as well. Uh, so they take much smaller space to house this full assembly where you have multiple cams uh, structured on a shaft and multiple followers being run by uh, the cams. So they take much smaller space as well. Uh, the disadvantages can be like uh, uh, vibrations or wear and tear. Generally because uh, the surface contact between the cam profile and the follower must be made uh, and continuously ensured. Uh, you need to have this uh, uh, constant uh, susceptibility that wear and tear is going to be there. And because these are rotational parts, uh, so vibration is an important part, and sometimes it is important to monitor the condition of these rotating parts to identify what is the current state uh, so that you may replace or repair them accordingly. But generally, the advantages are much higher and the disadvantages can be managed by a good uh, maintenance paradigm. And that's why these are very popular choice among the mechanical engineers uh, to have a specific kind of output motion exhibited. So there can be numerous applications of cam follower mechanisms. And I've selected only a couple of these. The very first one is a screw lathe machine. Uh, prior to CNC lathe machines, this was a very popular choice in the machining industry. And this is also called automatic lathe. Uh, so what happens is that uh, internally there are cam follower mechanisms which are going to allow these uh, multiple tools to perform the machining action in a very coordinated and in a very controlled fashion. And they uh, perform the action in a very quick action as well, in a, in a quick fashion as well, uh, because uh, uh, these are production machines and uh, productivity is ensured uh, as well. Uh, so I'm going to play this video, but before I do that, I should also emphasize that you need to correlate the, uh, the observations over here with the machine tools that you are studying in this semester as well. Uh, so in that, you know that the feed rate and the material removal rate uh, and the spindle speed is uh, very much important to ensure uh, uh, the quality of the machining. So you would observe that the cam follower mechanisms over here in the screw lathe machine are ensuring all those necessary machining requirements as well. So I'm going to play this video, observe it with the observation that there are cam follower mechanisms in them.
So another example is that of automobile engine. And in that, you would find the camshafts uh, where you have multiple cams manufactured uh, or machined. Uh, and then there are multiple followers as well, which allow the air fuel mixture to be fed into the uh, into the cylinders and uh, the exhaust gases to be taken out from the chambers. Uh, so you would see that happening in this animation and it would give you the effectiveness of uh, of uh, cam follower mechanisms that we are uh, that we have introduced already. So let's quickly run this. So now it is appropriate to introduce the CAM terminology. Uh, and in that, the very first thing that we need to study is the type of follower motion. We will see that later on, then the joint closure and the types of those, and the type of followers that are possible, then the direction of follower motion, and then type of motion constraints, and then the type of motion programs that can be uh, machined or implemented on the CAM profile. So these are the necessary CAM terminologies that are needed to be cleared uh, before we start the uh, designing process. So obviously there are two types of follower motion. One is oscillating and the other one is translating as we have already uh, briefly mentioned earlier. Uh, so in case of oscillating follower, you can see that the cam is going to have a rotation which is being exhibited in terms of omega 2 over here. Uh, so this rotates and when it rotates there is this half joint over here and as a result of that the follower is going to have a moving uh, contact over the surface of this cam. Uh, and as a result of that and the way the uh, follower has been housed over here on the ground link uh, you can see that uh, the oscillating action is going to be exhibited by the follower. Uh, and uh, in order to make sure that the follower is going to have uh, a contact made all the times when the cam rotates, there is the spring added to it. Uh, so that's uh, in, for the assurance that this follower is going to have the contact made all the times. And in case of translating follower, the angular velocity is not important, but the linear velocity is important. And that's also because uh, we have constrained the motion of the follower by using these uh, bearing uh, surfaces engaged over there. And in order to ensure that the roller is going to have a contact always uh, with the cam profile, you can see a spring housed over here. So this cam also rotates and this is the angular velocity of that and as a result of that the follower is going to have a linear action or a linear velocity exhibited at the output. So at this particular stage it would be appropriate to identify that this action is analogous to a four bar linkage that you have already uh, studied. And over there you can see that there was this rotating link having uh, angular velocity associated with it and we were calling that to be a crank 
and the rocker was having an oscillating uh, uh, motion and that is exactly the way the follower is exhibiting its motion over here. So this is analogous to four bar uh, mechanism or linkage that we have studied. And this one obviously is also analogous to another mechanism that we have studied already, which was called crank slider mechanism. So it means that uh, there are analogies between uh, the, uh, the analysis that we have already done in case of linkage mechanisms and the one that we are studying today. So instantaneously, the same analysis can be performed over here uh, in these CAM follower mechanisms as well. Moving on, the type of joint closure can be of two different types. One is what we call force closure and the other one is what we call form closure. So at this particular stage, force is being exhibited right over here. Uh, so you can see that over here that this uh, spring is forcing uh, this follower to remain pushed against the uh, cam profile all the times. So as a result of that, as a result of this force being exerted by the spring, uh, you're going to call this kind of joint closure to be a force closure. And similar is the case over here where you have this spring uh, forcing the roller to have this contact made with the, with the profile of the cam always. So in both of these cases, it is quite obvious that spring is being used uh, to exert a force, uh, forcing the follower to keep in contact always with the rotating cam profile. So this is one type of joint closure, what we call force joint. Another type of a joint closure is what we call form closure. And these are the examples of that. So in the very first one, you can see the uh, translating follower action over here. And in that, you can see that there is this slot inside uh, the cam over here. So what happens over here is that the roller is uh, placed inside this slot. And because of the other constraints over here, uh, you can see that uh, the only possibility for this follower is to have the translating effect uh, exhibited in terms of linear velocity. So angular velocity in, linear velocity out. The other thing that you can observe over here is that there is no spring over here. So let me write down over here, no spring is needed. Uh, and that's because uh, the way the form closure has been uh, structured. So geometry itself uh, makes sure that the roller is always engaged with the profile of the cam. So in case of oscillating uh, a follower, uh, you can see that. Right over here. Uh, so the oscillating action is being exhibited right over here. And then there is a third possibility. And this possibility is an interesting one. You can see that there is only uh, a single shaft and on that single shaft, uh, you can see that there is this uh, cam profile over here, which is the uh, conjugate one. And then there is another one, which is right over here. And this is the profile number two. So you have uh, conjugate uh, cams over here. And uh, on one cam, you have one of the rollers and on the other cam you have uh, another roller uh, getting rotated and because uh, the structure is uh, the, the structure is a machine in a sense that this angular displacement remains fixed so as a result of that uh, you have a form closure maintained on the conjugate pairs of these uh, of these cams as well so let me write down conjugate pair of cams over here. So this is another possibility of joint closure. So there can be different kinds of followers. It can be a roller follower, it can be a mushroom follower, or it can be a flat-faced follower as well. Uh, by the way, there are other kinds 
uh, of follower as well, but uh, these are the most commonly used ones. And in that, you can see the roller follower has got this roller uh, attached to it. Uh, so this is the roller. Let me indicate that. And in that, you are going to have the rolling surface. So that's one thing. But internally, you're going to have a bearing surface as well. So there is going to be uh, uh, some sort of bearing inside it, which makes this uh, assembly to be a bit complex assembly. And by the way, uh, there is going to be a pin inserted in there as well, which is right over there. So uh, as a result of that, uh, you are going to have the price of these uh, followers uh, to be a bit higher. So that's one constraint. Uh, but the benefit of having this high price uh, roller follower is that you are going to have the friction to be on the smaller side. So that's the benefit of it. Uh, alternatively, you can use the mushroom follower and the name mushroom is given by the shape of it. Uh, and you have the flat faced follower over there as well. Uh, so it depends on uh, the nature of application uh, that you decide that what kind of follower is going to be the acceptable follower. Uh, sometimes it is going to be the cost, uh, which is kind of a constraint. And sometimes it is going to be the life of the cam follower mechanism, which is going to be important. And sometimes the uh, the ease of uh, manufacturing such kind of followers is going to be the deciding factor. But whatever it is, you have different options available. And when we're going to study design, you would see that there are certain pros and cons associated with uh, these kinds of followers. So those design constraints will be discussed later on in conjunction with this slide. So sometimes it is important for you to realize that the follower motion can also change uh, the direction as well. So in case of radial uh, cam, it is going to be differently structured as it is structured in case of axial cam. In case of radial cam, if I may draw it over here, uh, you can see the axis of rotation of cam is coming out of the board. So this is something like this, that it is coming out of the board. And you can see that the follower action is getting uh, something like this direction. And these two are making a 90 degrees angle between the two. So the axis of traverse of the follower is upwards and downwards, and the axis of rotation of the cam is uh, coming out of the paper. So it means that the, uh, the, uh, the two axes are mutually orthogonal. Uh, but this is not the case in case of axial cam. In case of axial cam, you can see the cam is right over here, moving about this axis. And by the way, the cam profile is very interesting. And I've previously mentioned that uh, there are two kinds of uh, joint closure. One is the force closure and the other one is the form closure. Uh, and this is one kind of form closure possibility that you may have. Uh, this, is, uh, 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 this cam is machined in a different way. There is this slot which forces the follower to have a movement. But this movement of the follower, because of the way it is constructed, is also uh, in parallel to the same axis of rotation of the cam. So that's why uh, it is called the axial cam. So it means that uh, the direction of follower motion is going to be uh, differently structured if you opt for a radial cam arrangement and uh, if you choose alternatively the axial cam. So you need to be conscious of it. So it is important for you to realize that what are the type of motion constraints as well. There is one type which is called critical extreme position uh, where the start and end positions are going to be important. Um, and there is another which is called critical path motion where the path is important between those, those, those points. So in terms of its realization, we're going to spend much time on that later on. But at this particular stage, just to give you a brief idea that if the cam is going to have a full rotation, it is going to start from a zero degree. It would go all the way to 360 degrees. And in that I can have further subdivision like 180 degrees, 90 and 270 degrees. So if the displacement is important for us, uh, for displacement, I may say that uh, uh, after 90 degrees, starting from this point, uh, the, uh, the displacement should be right over here. 
But what is the path over here? I'm not very much bothered about it. Uh, so that's what we call uh, that uh, the start and the end positions are important. And this is I'm indicating about the displacement. Uh, alternatively, in case of critical path motion, uh, so if this is the same structure over here, you have 360 degrees starting from zero and you have 180 degrees, 270 and 90 degrees over here. So it is important for uh, in certain cases to identify the path taken by the cam, uh, sorry, the profile taken by the follower is going to be important. So sometimes in case of displacement, sometimes in case of velocity, it is going to be important to identify uh, the path and that path is going to be important in addition to uh, the extreme points. So when you have that, you need to define the uh, CAM profiles in a different way. So we are going to cover those, uh, but at this particular stage, this would be just like for the sake of introducing the terminology is sufficient. So just like a quick revisit of uh, uh, what we have discussed so far, uh, we have discussed the type of follower motion, uh, rotational and translational parts. Uh, we have discussed the kind of joint closure that may be there, force and form closure. We have discussed a few types of followers as well, rollers, mushroom and flat. The pros and cons have been discussed as well. Uh, the direction of follower motion, which is going to be changing the direction of uh, follower action uh, corresponding to the uh, to the input on the cam that has been discussed uh, the type of motion constraints have been briefly discussed as well and now we are going to study uh, these over here in the next slide so some factors are going to be important over here so we will discuss in conjunction with these type of motion programs uh, so this is uh, where we are standing now